Welcome to John Kehoe's presentation, Native Plants That Attract Native Bees, sponsored by the California Native Plant Society. In this short video, I introduce just some of the many native bees that we can find in the San Francisco Bay Area. By planting native plants, we can boost the native bees' health and population sizes. I open this slideshow with a picture of a black-tailed bumblebee founding queen in winter. She's feeding on a sentinel manzanita. Note her shaggy hair and yellow bands, especially that one behind her wings. This sentinel manzanita is known botanically as Archistaphylus densiflora sentinel manzanita. This photo was taken about three weeks after the previous one. This shrub supports dozens of queens and perhaps hundreds of offspring, at least for a while. The three common bumblebees found locally. On the left is the California bumblebee. It has a black face. In the center is the black-tailed with that yellow band of hairs behind the wings. And on the right, the yellow-faced, which is the most common bumblebee along California's coastal and bay areas. A female carpenter bee seen feeding on a western redbud. These small trees often blossom in February or March. As these large bees forage for nectar, their weight triggers the flower's anthers to pop out of the keel section. The western redbud, known botanically as Circus occidentalis, is on the left and blossoms before the Ray Hartman's Ceanothus, which is on the right. This photo was taken in March. Their uh, bloom periods overlap, so these two shrubs provide uh, nectar and pollen for several weeks. Digger bees are related to bumblebees and are roughly the same size and shape. Shown here in March is a Habropoda species of digger bee, and it's approaching a lilac verbena, known botanically as verbena lilacina. Here we see a tiny sweat bee female. She's clearing some pollen from a blue-eyed grass flower. Note uh, her brassy color and that pollen collection on her hind legs. Blue-eyed grasses uh, are known botanically as Cicerinchium bellum, and these are complemented by the saffron buckwheat, Areogonum crocatum. The blue-eyed grass flowers are only about an inch across, so we can appreciate the small size of the sweat bee seen in the previous slide. This is a tiny female leafcutter bee sipping nectar from a hybrid buckwheat. This bee is only about three-eighths of an inch long and she has pollen collect collected on the underside of her abdomen. The uh, hybrid buckwheat that we saw the leaf cutter bee on is uh, photoed in the center of the frame here. There are reddish buds on the taller stems left of center, but you can see once the flowers open, they are uh, pale yellow. This buckwheat volunteered in that location, so we cannot identify it to a species. We're reasonably sure though, one of its parents is the saffron buckwheat. A female sweat bee gathering pollen inside a California poppy, Escolzia californica. Bees uh, are often seen on their sides while circling around the poppy anthers. This is a dark metallic green osmia species of uh, mason bee. It's foraging on a golden yarrow in uh, May. Golden yarrow, known botanically as Areophyllum confertiflorum, uh, attracts a lot of pollinators. Uh, here's a large female carpenter bee uh, robbing nectar from Cleveland sage. She's too big to fit inside the blossom, so she pierces it near the base and robs it of nectar. This is a large uh, specimen of Cleveland sage, 
botanically known as Salvia clevelandii. This is on an overcast morning in May. This plant is about seven feet across and some of these salvias grow even wider. Another digger bee. This one is an Anthophora species. It's approaching a coyote mint in June. This bee has only black and white bands, but otherwise at a glance looks like a bumblebee. Her bumblebees don't have black and white bands. Here's a different group of coyote mints, uh, botanically known as Monardella villosa. This is in June. The nickname teddy bear is given to the male valley carpenter bee. This one is hanging onto a narrow leaf milkweed, Asclepius fascicularis. Notice his extended tongue. These plants also support our monarch butterflies. Two Megachylidae uh, bee family members. On the left, we see a leaf cutter female. She's a Megachyle species. She's browsing on a California buckwheat, Ariagonum fasciculatum. On the right is a wool carter bee. I think it's a female. Uh, it's an anthidium species browsing on California phacelia, botanically known as Phacelia californica. Both of these plants are favorites uh, among bees and gardeners. This is a female leaf cutter carrying a leaf section into her nest between these rocks. These females line their nest cavities with leaf cuttings, much like wallpaper and they partition their cells. She lays one egg into each cell. This is a male longhorn digger bee, probably a Melisodes species on California sunflower, botanically known as Helianthus californicus. The long antennae uh, indicate a male bee, and we can see that he's able to pick up a lot of pollen, even though he's only seeking nectar. Notice his tongue. This is on a hot day in August. And a female Colites species of membrane bee on a buckwheat in August. Note the pointed tip of her abdomen and the black and white bands and that she collects pollen on her hind legs. And our plant winners listed alphabetically by genus mostly. Arctostaphylus, our manzanitas, Ceanothus, called Ceanothus or lilacs, Ariagonum, our buckwheats, Salvia, or sages, also called salvias, and then various annuals too. By choosing plants from these four genera and adding assorted annuals, we can support bees and other pollinators throughout the year. Thanks for watching. Here's additional information about me.